What's going on, y'all? So, we are back again for another episode review of the new season of The Shy. You know what? I tweeted something about this just a little while ago on um, Twitter. You know, I was kind of in my feelings about something, but, you know, I just neither here nor there. Um, I know some people was like, girl, first thing first. I'm glad only one person asked me where the review was. And if somebody else did, I didn't see it. But y'all should already know, well, everybody else knew that, you know, unless I said I'm not going to review it to, you know, just hold on and give me a chance to get to it. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. This is why the stuff don't be recording when I be wanting to record. I have no idea what's been going on with my direct TV. Like, why are they messing up like that? But anyway... But, um, you know, I was going to do the review yesterday, actually. I had all intent and purposes of doing a review for the show, watching it, doing it yesterday. Um, but when I came home, y'all, my mouth was hurting so bad. Like, I really had to put on a front when I was doing the Love and Marriage Detroit, uh, you know, review. I don't know why, but it, 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 it be certain times of the year where my mouth wants to start acting up. And I'm talking about that uh, wisdom tool. And it refuses to pop up to the surface and to break through the skin. But y'all know how when it be acting like it's bubbling, like it's going, like your gum bubble up a little bit, like it's trying to break through. And so therefore it becomes inflamed and it becomes irritated. That's what was going on. So I had to literally just salt my mouth up you know with warm water salt all that stuff just to make sure it's not infected and it's it's feeling a little bit better today it's more tolerable yesterday i could barely close my mouth after i did that review i could barely close my mouth it ain't make no sense um but i'm here and let's get into this review so this is what it is okay the episodes originally comes on on sunday on tv for the shot if you don't know, you can watch it either on the Paramount app now um, on Friday. They're streaming or also Showtime app. You know what I'm saying? So, given that you can watch it starting on Friday, I think that I will try to get the reviews out, if it's okay with y'all, between Saturday, Saturday at the latest. That's what I'm hopeful, okay? Would that work for y'all? Because sometimes some people ain't even watch the chat, so I'm just making sure. Y'all put that down in the comments, but let's just get into the episode. Um, This, to be quite honest, this season looks like it's it's going to be good. I'm not even going to lie. It looked like it's going to be good. I was I was here for the episode, okay? I, I was really here for the episode. Um, It started off not too much. And y'all know, like, see, I just don't want to put it out there for the shot because the shot started off so great. It started off so strong in the first couple of seasons. And then, you know, that third season was cute, too. And then we had that whole season where Keisha got kidnapped or whatever. And we were just like, I mean, I get it. But that kind of drained me. And it just kind of put, like, a whole damper on the show. You know, at that moment... That's when I feel like the shot went to a whole totally different, um, you know, it went to a different place that we wasn't expecting it to go. And it wound up giving us a different feel that we wasn't expecting or looking forward to. It just didn't give us that same, the shot feel that we was had. Like, and I'm sorry to be talking about this at the beginning because I'm not going to talk too much about the episode because the episode really was more so like an introduction back to everybody and to a, a catch up as to what everybody is up to and what everybody is doing. Baby, when I tell you they set up the episode, they set up this episode for the um season and I said, oh, wow. Okay, so I see where we're going now, you know. Um, hopefully we gonna get back to some of the grittiness, you know, um, because that's what really, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a Chicago native, South side all day, every day, born and raised. Okay. Um, and when I saw the shot first, come on, I said, Ooh, you know, you got, um, Duda and you had, what's his name? 
What was the other dude now? Not Quincy, but the other dude that was working for Quincy that wound up getting killed in the first season or something like that. You know, uh, you had all these niggas up in there. I said, oh, y'all really going at it. Y'all really going at it. Pop, 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 pop. So I was really here for it. You know what I'm saying? I said, well, Chicago, so, you know, got to be real to the streets. You know what I'm saying? But um, then just veered off course a little bit. So hopefully this is where we get it. And I'm loving the fact that a lot of the characters seem to be progressing. And that is what I want to see when I look at TV shows, okay? I look at a sitcom. By the time it get into the sixth season, baby, you should not be. The characters should not still be in the same place and doing the same dumb mess that they've been doing since season one. Tyler Perry take notes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to throw that out there for a little bit because y'all already know. But anyway, we get up into the episode. And the episode, let's, let's just let's just go there, okay? We gonna go character by character because y'all, the first of all, the episode was a whole hour. Girl, girl. But it didn't feel like an hour, okay? We get the situation going on with Keisha well, I'm going to put that, I'm going to put that to the side because Duda, girl, girl, y'all know I love me some Duda, right? Y'all know I love me some Duda, but uh, we'll put him to the side for a minute. Victor, okay, aka Trig. We ain't calling him Trig no more. Trig has transitioned and I'm here for it, okay? I don't want him to go back to what he used to do. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do your little hard crime. Do your little time or whatever. Learn from your mistakes. And you're supposed to mature and elevate. That's what Victor is doing. And I said, all right. He's still with Fatima. How we know? Because, baby, they was fucking soon as the episode came on and we seen they scenes. I said, oh. You know, it was one of those episodes where you start off everybody getting it in. I said, you know what? That's fine. But we see how they difference. Okay? Because... Tri well, Victor and Fatima, they're very much into it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, once they finish doing what they're doing, he's just in his feelings and, and his thoughts because he wants to win this election. Y'all remember last season he was running for either alderman or city councilman or he was running for office in Chicago, okay? And, you know, he had the campaign manager, that was being ran by Duda and um, I think Candy at one point. I don't know. I, I can't remember, but I know Duda had a part in it and um, wanted him to basically lie about who he was with, lie about himself and all of this stuff. But then it came out about who he was because he said he did not want to lie in the first place. And so they kind of brought his numbers down. And that was because the people, not necessarily because of who he is, but because the people lost trust in him. And then that video came out of him um, beating up Bakari or whoever it was, you know. And I was just like, well, he was defending himself. They had the little boy, whoever that um, broke up his car or whatever. I mean, they messed his car up. What you expecting to do? Y'all would have did the same thing. Baby, speaking of beating asses, did y'all see that video? Did y'all see that video? Oh my goodness. It was another march on uh, Alabama, bitch. Okay, baby. Alabama got to go on. And when I say it got to go on, it got to go on in the worst way. And them motherfuckers found out. Them motherfuckers found out, baby. Girl. That black security guard told them people on that dock, could you please move your little putt-putt boat so that the riverboat can come through and, um, you know, dock like they supposed to. This is reserved for the riverboat. Baby, you should already know this. Girl, they got mad at this black man because they was all white. They got mad at this black man thinking that they can do whatever it is they want to or whatever and throw their little privilege out there. And I said, what is going on? I'm seeing the video and the man is literally just doing his job. And you pushing him, punching him, attacking him, doing all this stuff. And next thing you know, the niggas come. I said, yes. You know, well, sometimes we don't come together, but we come together when it is needed, baby. We need to start coming together a little bit more. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit more often. You know, but maybe when that little boy got up in that water and swam, I said, yes. When that man picked that chair up, now listen, usually I am not here for men hitting on women. 
I'm really not here for y'all just fighting just to be fighting. But this was a purpose. They started that mess. Them women were getting involved in it. Some of them was pulling them away. Some of them was trying to hit the men and everybody else that was in there as well. And when that black man picked up that chair and knocked that bitch in the head with it, I said, God damn, knock the sonic coins off her mouth. I said, oh, her whole neck went down like this. I said, that's what you get. That's what you get. Girl, they was whooping that ass, okay? One of them got pushed in the water. I was like, oh, this is such a joyous look, you know? And it ain't, y'all, we get we get knocked down so much. We get knocked down so much. So once we see a, a, a force where everybody's coming together and we got a little victory, of course, we're going to be excited about it. So I don't care how people feel about people saying, you know, I was here for what happened and they whooped their ass and all that stuff and woo, woo, woo. It needed to happen because they started it first. And they made it into what this is, okay? Got arrested, too. But anyway, I don't even know what I was talking about. But, yeah, yeah, um, Victor had yoked up that dude that messed up his car. And so, they had put a negative funk on his um campaign. So, now you got his campaign manager that is going to be his campaign manager now. Or his, uh, yeah, his campaign manager, Quincy. That's his name. That's what I saw the subtitle say. Basically, he's coming through and trying to tell him, you know, your number's not really that good. And what you need right now is a viral moment. And he was like, a viral moment? Oh, jeez, what do you mean? And it's so crazy that in this day and age that a lot of things are very much dependent on a viral moment for a lot of people these days to try to succeed or to get noticed or get somewhere. You know, I, I, I was even, you know, what I was talking about earlier in the, um, in a review, I was just feeling some type of way. I was like, you know what? I've been, I was, I was honestly had doubts about whether or not I was gonna come back and give y'all a review for this season because I'm like, you know what? I just felt in my mind, you know, nobody. Again, this is not me saying that I'm they're obligated to or, you know, I'm entitled to because I know that neither one of those are true. It's just that when you review something or you talking so passionately about something that especially takes place in your own city and it's about your city your hometown and it's being made by people that is from your hometown you you sometimes want you know to get a little bit of acknowledgement or whatever but you know throughout this whole process it has to happen and it is what it is it is what it is you know what i'm saying um It's a natural feeling, but, you know, I'm not going to dwell on it. Because, again, nobody's obligated to give me anything or to say anything to me. And I understand that 100%. But, you know, sometimes it just stings a little bit. It just stings a little bit. But, you know, so we get back into it. Like I said, you got to have a viral moment. All right? And <clears throat> he winds up going to Smokey's. Okay? He goes to Smokey. Smokey was having a grand opening. It was already open for the most part. And things look like they're doing well. He goes to Smokey talking to um, Emmett. And then I think his campaign manager said, why don't you get up there and do a speech? So he gets up there and he starts talking. It was very simple. Like, you know, talking about what Smokey means to him and all that stuff or whatever. Next thing you know, he turned around and popped it and wasted some Red pop, as they say. I do that. Listen, I'm from Chicago, like I said. Y'all really go up into the, um, you know, the little stores and stuff and be like, can I get a red pop? I don't know if I ever really heard people say that. Or if they do, it's been a long time since I've heard it. Because I don't, maybe because I really don't drink, I don't drink red pop. <laughs> it sounds so weird, but, you know, we say pop all the time. You know, niggas, we don't, we don't say the flavor. <laughs> Give me some grape or uh, give me some purple Kool-Aid. Give me some blue Kool-Aid. Give me that red Kool-Aid. That's what we say. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he goes to the back. And as he's in the back, somebody is recording him taking his shirt off and trying to fix his clothes and get a fresh shirt on because his original shirt to his suit is all messed up. And it was white. So it's red and white at this point. So he bare chested you know what i'm saying and somebody's recording of course they put it online and um now it's getting hits you know what i'm saying and so at first i thought he knew something about it 
But then, come to find out, he didn't know anything about it. He was up there talking to Fatima, and he get the hit. He was like, what the hell is this? And so he has to go down there and talk to Quincy, like, uh, his campaign manager, like, what's going on with this or whatever? And he was like, I mean, you needed a viral moment. It's your viral moment. And, you know, it didn't put you over the lead, but it brought you neck and neck to whoever's you going against. And that's what we needed. Um, and eventually, he did win the election. So this is a new path forward for Tri uh, uh, Victor, formerly known as Trig. Um, him and Fatima had a little conversation because, you know, he wanted to have her come with him to do, I guess, to the, ha uh, the campaign or something, whatever. And she was like, no, because I'm supposed to write about these things. I'm not supposed to be a public figure like that. I don't want to be the story or end the story and all that. And he said what you wanted me to, you know, claim you in public and be, you know, not put you to the side or whatever. She said, I'm talking about in your private life, not your business life. OK. And at first I was like, well, girl, you went through all this just for him. Or make up your mind. But then she explained it. I don't have time for the people to come at me because of who I am. And she was like, if you look at my DMs and all the transphobic stuff that I already get, that's going to escalate. I said, wow, you know what? I forgot all about that. I forgot all about that. So I was like, understandable. And he kind of understood as well. But like I said, eventually he won the election. And he told, um, he asked Quincy, that was the campaign manager to be his chief of staff so that was cute moving on from that we get darnell and jada they still together they only been married for a few months and we see them first start off where she getting a full world from him and he talking about you know he don't want to become that boring marriage and all that stuff and they you know playing around with each other jada getting on her high horse a little bit because she's sitting down with the girls and she's trying to tell them what they need to do, especially Tracy, since she married now. You know, when people all of a sudden get into a relationship, you know, they want to say this, they want to say that, you know what I'm saying? They know everything in the world. They are like the master class on it and everything. I'm like, Jada, you just got up into this relationship with this man who left you high and dry for how many years? Tracy said, you want me to be up here waiting for my no-loss love to come back 20 years later like he did for you? And she said, well, hold up, girl. It wasn't 20 years. It was 22. I said, well, it was a long-ass time. Ain't nobody got time for that, baby girl. Um, But Tracy is up here talking about how she just... She needs to find herself because she don't know what she going to do uh, after these failed relationships. Because y'all remember she used to mess around with Duda. Okay. She used to mess around with Duda. Huh? And Candy was about to fight at one point. You couldn't tell me no different. Um, But she talked about how she going to be all to herself. She got to find herself. And baby, at the end of the episode, what wind up happening? Duda popped over under that door. He said, ding. And she opened up the door. He was like... <clears throat> I texted you, and she said, and I ignored you. I said, wait a minute, what's going to happen? Girl, next thing you know, dude, I inside the house. I said, now, Tracy, you should have closed that door a little bit harder than you tried. Okay, you know what was going to happen. I said, the way dude I came to that door, baby, I said, Tracy, let him in. And when I say let him in, just, just, just let him in. Let him have his way, because at this point, how could you resist? Because I said, girl, we already know. Because listen, listen. Listen, do not fan, all right? Do not fan. And if you straight girls would have, y'all would have did the same thing that Tracy did. Y'all would have fold so bad and so fast. All he would have had to say was, I texted you. And that deep, sexy voice that he be trying to put on, uh-huh, it kind of got a little pitch to it. I don't know, because he ain't got the deepest voice, but it got like a little, mm, to it i don't know it just does it i said yeah y'all would have dropped on drops i said tracy quit trying to tracy tried to be strong for all the two seconds all the two seconds and when he reached out and put that hand on her hip i said go ahead tracy take him into the room now let me ask you this question tracy you sleeping on a full-size mattress i mean it's no shade it's no shade or whatever but we grown <laughs> We are grown, queen sizing up, okay? Teenagers sleep on full size, all right? I know I'm hitting somebody. Somebody's finna say, 
Well, what's wrong with a full size? Because I sleep on a full size. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with a full size. You sleeping by yourself? Or you and your partner be up in that bed like this? Baby, we need some room. I need to have a little bit of lead to strip between us, okay? Because sometimes I don't want to cuddle with you, all right? Because you get on my nerves. You stay over there. I'm going to stay over here queen sizing up, okay? Because mm -mm, we need a little bit of space, all right? She woke up. Dude, I was gone. Texting her and said, it was good. Uh, anything you need from me, just let me know. I said, wait a minute. You're not going to hit it and quit it. Had her sitting there looking at that Eartha Kick, uh, you know, um clip that Eartha Kid was talking about with relationships. I said, I don't know why you looking at it because you ain't gonna buy bad. Soon as that man say, hey Tracy, what you doing? Nothing. That's what you gonna be like. That's what you gonna be like, Tracy. Mm-hmm. You gonna try to resist for two seconds and then you gonna drop them down, okay? Moving on from that, also, also, girl, we got Duda up here messing things up, okay? Duda is the head nigga in charge again. Y'all remember last season, he took Quincy out. Towards the end of the last season, he took Quincy out. Popped. I said, ooh. And I'm talking about Big Q, okay? He needed to go. He needed to go because y'all know he was a pedophile. He was a pedophile. You know, they necessarily said, but we already knew it because he did what he did with Tracy. And Tracy was a teenager, a young teenager or whatever when he got her. You know what I'm saying? And basically forced himself to be with her. Or she was forced to be with him or something like that. It was crazy. But either way. He's setting up shop. <clears throat> he up here doing deals with um, Rob, which is Tiffany's man, okay? Which is played by mine, right? And if y'all don't remember, Q is Rob's nephew. Or I should say Q is Rob's uncle, and he's the nephew. And he found out that Q got killed. He still don't know who killed him. And I said, the nigga that killed him is sitting right in front of you, trying to give you a deal to work out your stuff, you know, um, move products for him and everything. Because, you know, he still sell the weed and all that shit, you know. And, of course, he's trying to act nonchalant about it because he just got that type of demeanor. And, like, he didn't really want to work with him. But then he told him, I'll give you 15% of everything that you sell and all this stuff and boom, boom. And he was like, I mean, just in case you give me a better, um, you giving me a better deal than my uncle did. So, cool. I said, uh-uh, uh-uh. And then did you hear the way that he brought up Emmett? He said, so you going to bring up Emmett? First of all, don't compare me to that nigga at all. I said, oh, Rob, you feel some type of way about Emmett? Mind you, you took his bitch. You took his bitch. I just want you to know that. You took his woman, um... And he was like, oh, yeah, I forgot you fucking his baby mama. And it was like, we live together. Oh, so y'all in deep. <laughs> I said, dude, I could be in messy. But if we got a business relationship that's about to be work, I said, listen, this man is about to be. He, oh, he finna just mess up Chicago in a second. <laughs> and he said, if I couldn't do it on the political front, I'm about to do it back under underground in the drug world, okay? I'm just in the streets. I'm just about to get back to who Duda is. And I said, that's what we've been wanting. That's what we've been wanting, okay? Um, meanwhile, speaking of Emmett, Emmett and Keisha actually opened up the, uh, the video, or I should say the episode, and they was doing it. Emmy wanted her to come so bad. She was like, no. I, I, he said, damn, girl, you ain't there yet. Because either she wasn't there yet or he wasn't there yet. He wasn't there yet. He wanted her to call him daddy. It was like, you know, if you call me daddy, I'll come on in a second. You know what I'm saying? She was like, I'm not going to call you no daddy. And I'm just sitting here like we see the dynamic change against with, with, with Keisha and um, Emmett. All of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? Like, the last time we seen them, they was all about each other. They was puppy loving it out. And now it's like they done settled into the relationship after a few months. And it's, I'm annoyed with you. And you go get the kids ready. I got to go on this interview. Well, I got to go to this grand opening. They can't get the schedules. It was like they was at each other's throat for a second. I mean, it wasn't that bad. But it was like, huh, something to think about. And I feel like... A lot of the reasons why Keisha probably has a problem with Emmett right about now or feels some type of way, probably not as deeply, but that's a reason. Um, it's the fact that he's working with Duda and she knows that Duda ain't worth shit and just shouldn't do it. And so um, 
Keisha winds up going, she's, she's trying to become like a teacher or a teacher's aide or whatever at this school. And she's working with like these preschool kindergarten kids. And um, she's basically shadowing this woman, this one teacher. And we see the different teaching styles of her. I don't know if the woman, the teacher that was already there did this on purpose or if this is really how she is. I think she needs to take a, 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 a um, she needs to take a page out of Keisha's book. And maybe it's because Keisha's green because she hasn't been around kids like that. And, you know, she's just starting out. But it was just the way that that teacher was talking to the little boy that didn't want to read and was trying to put him on the spot or whatever. And he going back and forth. And at first, I'm sitting here like, maybe, maybe it's because he probably got a little learning disability and it's undiagnosed and they don't know and he feels a little bit embarrassed or whatever and keisha even told the lady like you know she came to her respectfully you know like you 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 have to do a different re uh, approach because she's the example of what happened when she was growing up or when she's seen how some of the boys don't like to read in public you know what i'm saying they probably not on the same level or they just don't like to read and be put on the spot and you have to encourage them to do so in a different way and the teacher wasn't here for it it was like you don't tell me what to do and you can't be coddling these kids you gotta force them out that comfort zone understandable but you was just doing the most and it just didn't make the boy want to get out of his comfort zone okay and sometimes some kids take a little bit more extra attention and not and that's not meaning that you got to coddle them you know Keisha winds up and she even said you know I do want to work here but I want to be able to speak my piece as well and then the lady was like well then you probably just ain't gonna be a good fit here I said excuse me miss girl excuse you not the one that's hiring anybody you're not the principal okay so you, i'm gonna need you to calm that down meanwhile she winds up talking to the little boy and doing exactly what she said to the lady she talked to him she encouraged him she actually asked why didn't you want to read because she was reading something and she told him to read he read it real good didn't stutter or anything Girl, he said, I just don't like reading in public in front of people. And I said, understandable. The boy probably had a little bit of anxiety or something like that. Or he just a little shy when it comes to doing things in front of people. He don't like public speaking. That's how a lot of us are sometimes. And for the teacher not to catch up on that, pick up on that, it was irritating me. Now, Keisha, I'm going to tell you something. When you came in, you was late, and you told that lady, I feel like the lady didn't like you for the jump because you started telling, first of all, you was late. But then you started saying, you know, me and my boyfriend, we did. Girl, I don't want to hear what happened and what's, what's the reason. You was late. Just don't let it happen again. Okay? I said, uh-uh, don't tell her too much. Don't tell her too much. Okay? But she winds up getting a position, so I'm glad about that. I love the progression of Keisha because that first girl, Keisha seemed like she could have been lost. And we could have really lost her when she had that whole experience, that trauma-filled experience happen to her. And she could have went down a whole totally different path. She could have went inside herself uh, way more than she probably did. She could have, you know, just taken her own self out because she couldn't deal with the depression of it all and all that. But no, she just continued forward. She found something else. No, I'm not going to be a runner but i'm gonna do something with kids this is something that i'm passionate about as well and i love that for her then you got the whole situation with emmett 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 is dumb i love the fact that he is out here not not really being the hustler that he was when we first saw him in season one not being a dad be daddy that he was even though we only see him taking care of at least one or two kids at a time um but and he's being a businessman, right? He's going legitimate for the most part. But at the same time, why are you linking up with Duda? I'm pretty sure everybody in Chicago know about Duda. If Keisha got a bad feeling and know about him and his griminess, how come you didn't know either? And I'm just sitting here like, bruh, this is not going to end well. He on his way to the shop, to the, uh, to the Smokies. Duda roll up on him. You got Picari in the car. You got Nuck driving and everything. And I'm just like, baby, what's about to happen? Took him to go get a new suit, okay? Smoking on cigars and all this stuff. He's buttering him up, giving him money to go ahead and get a new car. 
He talking about the fact he showed Keisha the car. Keisha was in the car with him and all that stuff. And she was like, well, how can you haven't got me a car? I would have said, baby, your nigga could get you a car. And was like, but my nigga ain't got my kid. Okay. I said, that don't mean shit to me. You fucking him and you living with him. He can buy you a car. That's what I would have said. But you know what? He wound up taking it to Duda and telling him his problems and stuff like that. And he was like, well, if your baby mama want a car, get her a car. You got the money. And I said, huh? And he just throwing all of this stuff. I said, where did he get all this money from? Now, I know Smokey opened up and you changed it around a little bit. It ain't been open that, that long, this location in Chicago. And I'm like, it, it, it can't just be flowing with the, like, in dough like that. It wasn't before, so how is it doing it now? Baby, that's because allegedly there's another location that is doing well in New York. They've never been to the New York um, location yet, come to find out, because that's what Keisha said. And um, all of a sudden, at one point, he looked at his bank account, and it was a whole bunch of money in there. We don't know how much, but it was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? And he winds up getting Keisha, not Keisha, but Tiffany a car. And, you know, Rob was looking like... I, I really don't want no issues to be, t be between Rob and um, Emmy at this point. Because technically speaking, you know, you was sleeping with his girl when they were together. Regardless of what you knew about the situation or not. You have her now. He's not trying to get with her. He's, look at that as an investment, taking care of his kid. You know, so she could get to and from where she needs to go with the child. That's all you need to do. But I will say, I was here for him fucking her up in that car, baby. I said, Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany was getting the back shots in the back seat while he was standing up. Let me tell you something. I said, I mean, I shouldn't even mention it because they in jail now. Y'all, that used to be how um them dudes that got, uh them girl, they probably was like 20 years old, 20 something or something like that. And they was in their early 20s. And they was on OnlyFans. I used to see them on my TikTok. That's how I first came across them. There's a gay couple, dark skin and a light skin. The light skin with the big hair. And then all of a sudden, they was on OnlyFans. Baby, a video popped up on the timeline one time. And they was up in that car. I said, damn, I'm doing the same thing that uh, Keisha, and, uh, not Keisha, but Tiffany and all, um, Rob was doing. I said, shit, and now they in jail for murder. I said, what the fuck? My and how the world turns on your ass. Look it up. Um. Anyway, anyway, you know how stuff just be popping up in my head. So you got that, and um, Duda is just running everything. Keisha don't like him. Keisha want a new place. She got in her feelings because of the fact that Tiffany got a new car and he did all of this without telling her. And so y'all already have tension that's going on and now you're not running things by her like this. On the one hand, y'all not married, so he really don't have to, but it's a respect thing. And it's like, listen to your girl. Because in this situation, Keisha is way smarter than Emmett. Emmy just not getting into this 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 position of power, this position of control, authority, and and, and, and business or whatever. Keisha looks like she's already been there some way somehow. Like she knows what she's talking about. She know what to do and all that. And Emmy, Emmy can get swayed by the simplest stuff, and that is exactly what happened with him being linked with Duda. It's like you have to look what happened to Brandon. Brandon was linked with Duda at one point, and Brandon is no longer here, boo-boo-boo, okay? And I said, please do not have this be a repeat of that storyline, because I don't want nothing to happen to Emmett, but I'm scared for Emmett right now. I am scared for Emmett because I don't know how deep he's going to get before he decides to try to get out and realize that he can't get out. You know, Duda ain't going to let him out of his clutches. Duda is literally buying him. Duda is, you know, giving him everything, having him smoke cigars and teaching him all of that, giving him advice on you got to take care of all your women. He said, I only got one. He said, you got four baby mamas, right? So them all your women, okay? And I was like, God damn, oh, okay. Meanwhile, you got that going on and... 
he was like, get the bitch a house. Talking about Keisha, get her a house or get her something big. Or, you know, he's using his broker to get the cars and stuff like that. And I'm sitting here like, Emmy, you don't see what's going on. And it's what happens when people who never had anything all of a sudden get a windfall of a lot of stuff. You know, they just think like, oh, well, hell, it's here. Let me get it. And not think of where it's coming from and what the consequences may be. Now, they was up in that um, lounge and they was having a little conversation trying to teach him how to smoke the cigar. One of them dudes come and find out he was working with Duda because he was over there with Bakari and Nup. And um, he was smacking on that gun real loud, chewing that gun real loud. He said, could you be quiet because I'm trying to talk to the boy right here. He said, I ain't chewing that loud. I said, oh, Lord, it was just the way that he did it. And you knew he was doing it on purpose. I just feel like he just felt like a little jealousy. I said, uh-uh, he had to go because he looked like he was going to be an issue anyway. Girl, he kept on doing it. And then after Duda I kept uh, finished giving him his little advice and all that stuff, baby, Duda I got up and shot that nigga in the chest and face and all that stuff and just said, <laughs> you good? You need anything else to Emmy? I'm sitting here like, Emmy just look like, what? I said, yeah, Emmy, be scared because you in too deep already. This is what Keisha was talking about, and you should have listened, okay? Um, But, yeah, you got that going on. Meanwhile, I thought he was about to kill that, that dude that, because uh, he got the chop shop going on. Baby, he got the drugs. He got um the investments, okay? He got a chop shop. He got all the stuff, but no, he ain't, he ain't touched old boy. He, he finna use some, find some use for the old boy that stole that car. I said, Lord, 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 dude, I about to take over. We in for it, dude, I take over, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. We got to get back to the gritty, okay, the nitty gritty of it all, you know? Meanwhile, we get to the kids, girl. We get to the kids. Papa is crushing on one of the uh, employees at uh, Smokey's. Come to find out she 19 years old. Papa about to turn 18 in the summer. She know a little bit about him. Used to listen to his little podcast. Like the episode that he did with Jay and um, Kevin, you know. And he very much interested. But Carver telling him to calm down. Don't be acting so thirsty. Because he was about to DM her. And he was like, you already followed her on Instagram. You already didn't like, like a whole bunch of her pictures already. Calm down. Kevin had to tell him and everybody else, if that's what you feel like doing, go ahead and do it, okay? Life's too short. Just go ahead and get your woman, all right? That's what you do. You know, Maisha over there because Kevin is having a kickback. Oh, yes. At his own crib. Kevin got his own crib. I said, wait a minute now. Now, how you affording this Chicago rent? We're doing what? What job? You still getting all this from playing video games? I said, <clears throat> I'm going to need you to go ahead and get that internet together and get you a little bit of seats so that you can go ahead and get your money from this internet situation, this game situation, okay? Um, But he decided to throw a little kickback. And, um, yeah, that's when we see all the kids together, or I should say the young adults at this point, because they're almost young adults. Um, Bakari's still with old girl that, you know, I can't remember her name, that came to live with Kevin. Yeah, Bakari's still with them, with her. Um, Maisha was giving Papa flavor or whatever, you know, some type of fever when he was talking about, um, who he was talking to or whatever. And then Bakari gonna say something. Oh, he talked to some old bitch at work. And I said, bitch, what? What? <laughs> what do you consider old? Pop is about to be 18. The girl is 19. How is that? <laughs> these kids these days don't know what they talking about. Girl, they be making me so mad sometimes. You would not age shame me. Okay? I said, oh, that made me feel old as shit. Because if you feel like 19 is old, baby, how old do you feel like when you get to 25? Damn. Damn. Um, you know, doing all of that, Gemma and Jake still together. <sighs> Jake got a little business where he's selling some shirts, look like some, you know, custom made shirts or whatever. Gemma doing the money and all that stuff. They was making me nervous for her to be counting that money out there in public right there. And people just come in. I said, you mean to tell me you're going to do that? Why people just, okay. Meanwhile, Gemma daddy fucking off on Tara. What's her name? Tiara? Remember, dude, I do girl who was coming on to um. What is Jason Weaver's character name? Let me look it up right quick. Let 
Jason Weaver the Shy. There you go. His name is. Oh, he from Chicago too. Oh, he from Chicago too. <laughs> This whole time, baby, I did not know that he is from the shy, 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 whatever the fuck, uh, Rashad. Um, yeah, he did a little thing with her, girl. The episode started off with the daddy up there banging her out, and Jimma up in the goddamn bed like, ain't this some shit? I don't want to hear this other, cause she he had to tell her, tell him, daddy. The only person that should be calling, the only woman in this house that should be calling you daddy is me. And daddy, uh, uh, Jim and daddy was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> so he had to go talk to Tierra and be like, you know, this can't happen. And he was, she was like, you need to just go ahead and tell your girl, uh, your daughter that I'm going to be in your life because this is more than just some little fucking around, okay? And baby, when that came to pass... Gemma didn't met her match, or Tierra didn't met her match, and I feel like Tierra held on, held her on, okay? Because she ain't, she ain't give in to Gemma. Gemma was trying to get at her, and then Tierra said, "Fuck it, bitch! You just gonna have to grow up because at the end of the day, you gonna have to move out eventually, okay?" I said, "Mm mm." She put her foot down, you know, because I really don't like Gemma. And did y'all see when um? Shia was sitting there on that couch at his girlfriend's house that they now moved in together. And he was just going through his phone and looking at Tierra's, uh, I hope I'm saying her name right, Tierra's photos and stuff. I said, Lord have mercy, what's going to happen now? Because mm -mm. remember, they had that little thing. I can't remember if they actually did something together or if they almost. But yeah, he hooked on that. But I felt bad for Shia. You know what I'm saying? I felt bad for him because... As he was going around and he was talking to his girl, his girl's coming home talking about her day at work and all this stuff and being somewhat discriminated against because, you know, she's the curator of the place that she works at. But you got people coming over to the white people at the place and acting like they're the curator and all that stuff. So she's dealing with that. The micro racism, macro racism, whichever one you want to call it. And then... He don't really have nothing to do at this point. And he's looking at all the men. And he even said it. I'm looking at all the men in my life and seeing how they're progressing and they're doing their thing. And yet I'm still just here. And I haven't. He like, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. And then the fact that he's been in jail. And that that took a whole bunch of years of his life. And he just, I understand. Ooh, bitch, I felt him in that moment. I felt him in that moment. Because listen, I still have my periods of time where I just feel like. I see my peers just moving and getting these opportunities and doing this and doing that. But yeah, I'm just here. And it's like, what am I doing wrong? Or am I not doing enough? Girl, you start self-doubting and all that stuff. And I don't know. I want him to be into the relationship with this woman. I can't remember her name. But at the same time, I don't know if it's going to work. I know they say opposites attract, but I don't know. I don't know, especially with him feeling the way that he feels almost as if he can't be the man that he want to be, like the provider that he wants to be because he don't have it like that. And then every time something goes wrong, she's like, well, how about we go here and I'll pay for it or whatever. And he already had an issue with that. She literally did that in this episode. But I wanted to go take him out to dinner and she said it's on me. And he like, I already cooked. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Um, the episode was pretty good. It was good for the most part. Um, like I said, it didn't give too much, but it gave just enough for a first time comeback. Um, cause it's been a minute. It's been a minute. You know what I'm saying? Oh, bitch. I almost forget the one part. Um, why at that kid back, right? Everybody done left. Myesha and Kevin still there, right? Okay. Of course, Kevin going to be there because that's his place. Maisha still there. I said, first of all, Maisha, please cover your titty up a little bit because uh, it looked like it was about to pop out. And I said, what's about to happen? As soon as they start talking about you still with Papa or y'all, you really over here. She's like, I, st I still I still always have love for Papa, but we just better as friends. As friends. And I said, oh, okay. And next thing you know, 
we found out that that girl Kevin was dating last season, the little one that was dealing with the universe and the stars and the zodiac sign, dumped him. And not because he did anything. She, according to Kevin, he he said she said that she can't be with a Virgo longer than three. <laughs> that little girl. <laughs> you ain't even in your 20s yet and you are doing the most girl you are still in high school and you are doing the most with this shit she's too much girl they was like Maisha was like can't handle us every time i said what is you you a Virgo or you a capricorn or you a Taurus? which one is it okay mm -hmm. and then i'm just sitting there they kick in with each other <laughs> and then i was like i know y'all ain't finna do what i think y'all finna do Mind you, they was just talking to Jake at the thing and um throwing little shots about how, you know, Gemma, you know, was never really single and uh had got Jake while, you know, just bringing up their past or whatever. But I guess it's good that they can laugh about it now. Um, next thing you know, Maisha and Kevin giving loves. Fuck me. Not me, but kiss me vibes. And I said, oh, I know y'all not. I know y'all not. Yeah, they did. I said, oh, shit. And I'm thinking back. Didn't Kevin like Maisha first before Papa? Or am I getting that wrong? Put it in the comments, girl. I said, oh, Lord. How is this going to go? First, you got Jake taking Kevin's girl. And now you finna have Kevin doing Maisha, who is Papa's ex. Man, I would never go with my friend's ex. And I would never take my friend's uh, girl. That just ain't me. I mean, these kids still, but shit. They got adult problems. Y'all, this was the, uh, shy. I did say it wasn't gonna be long. I gave y'all a 45-minute video. I see y'all later. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about the episode. I thought it was a good opener. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the rest of the season, all right? Peace, y'all. <laughs>